Amen. So that means the leadership of the church. They're the ones who can do things about the problems in the church. Yes. Talking to Sister Sally, their brother Billy. It's not going to help. Go to the leadership. We have deacons in this church. We have elders in this church. They can help you. Talking about it's not going to help. When we have an issue with another member of the church, we've got to resolve the issue. And Jesus thought it was very important, more important than giving offerings. More important than putting your tithes and your offerings uh, in, in the plate. Jesus thought making things with your brother, making things right with your brother is more important than that. Because we read in 1 John that our love for God is in question when we hate our brother. 1 John 4 and 20 says, If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. He, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 23, Therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, you're coming to put your tithes and your offering in the plate, and all of a sudden you remember your brother's mad at you. Don't put that gift in the plate yet. Right. Jesus said, Go back and be reconciled with thy brother. Now you don't get to hold on to your, your tithes and your offering. The scripture says, Then come back and offer your gift. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But don't give it until things are right. Whew, Jesus, that kind of hurts. Where is that written? Oh, uh, let me say that again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Amen. Uh, so, so we need to make sure that we take care of problems and somebody say amen. 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 We've got to be faithful. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, 15 through 17 talks about taking care of resolution, uh, 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 problems. Uh, uh, these are resolution steps. Moreover, if thy brother uh, shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, uh, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, uh, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and as a publican. So in other words, uh, if you got a problem with somebody, go talk to them, try to make it right. If they say, I right, get out of my face, uh, uh, you go get somebody and take them with you. Some elders of the church, uh, take them with you and let's talk about this. If they don't want to talk to them, guess what? They get to come before the church. And if they don't want to hear the church then they, guess what? They're dismissed. They're no longer a part of this body. Right. Thank God we've never had an issue like that in the 12 years that we've been here. Amen. Somebody say Amen. unity. Unity. Amen. And if we ever do, guess what uh, resides and what presides over everything is the Word of God. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that, that's how we take care of it. Amen. And, and thank God for unity. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Read Romans chapter 12. I, I want you all read say Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter Amen. I want you to read that. And this talks about uh, how we need to live in our service uh, and our faithfulness to God. Uh, amen. So read that when you have the time. Uh, amen. We need to take care of problems. If there's a problem, uh, amen, there is no problem too big that God cannot take care of. And now I'm going to go real, real fast. Uh, uh, we're faithful in our attendance. Uh, we're faithful uh, uh, to one another. We need to be faithful in our t talent. If God has blessed you, amen. It doesn't matter if all you, if the only thing you're talented, talented at uh, is is pushing a vacuum cleaner. Guess what? You be faithful in that town. All of it. And I first, I want to say thank you. The, the last few months, uh, this church has been awesome at keeping the church clean and the grounds done. I say praise the Lord for your faithfulness uh, in, in keeping this place the way that it's supposed to be. Let's give ourselves a hand clap of appreciation. Hallelujah. So we've got to be faithful with the way that God, that God has, the, the talents that, and the abilities that, that God has blessed us with. And we need to realize that God has invested in these things so that we could invest in His kingdom. God has given us talents so that we can bless the kingdom of God. Your talents are not just so that you can uh, earn a good paycheck or so that you can do good at this or that. Your talents and your abilities are, are so that you can be a blessing to God. We need to be faithful with our time. Can someone say amen? Amen. And then the old saying is that people do what they want to do. What God is looking for are people who want to do something for Him. 
Each and every one of us uh, can find time throughout the week uh, to do something for God. Uh, we love God, we love people, and we serve the world. We don't just say that at church, we do it when we walk out on these streets. Amen. Hallelujah. So there are things. I, I thank God for our missionaries and those who have been working for our crops program. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. We're going to continue to do stuff like that. Because this time, this extra time that we have throughout the week uh, is not for us to just go to the movies, uh, uh, go shop, go do this and that. It's for us to do things uh, for others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've got to be faithful with our time. We've got to get involved in doing something for God. We've got to be faithful in our giving. Can you say amen? amen? A lot of people don't have a problem with being faithful in their attendance or their time or their talent. But when it comes to giving, there's sort of a, a, a little bit of a withdrawal there. Giving's got to be approached from the right perspective and with the right activity, uh, with the right attitude. We've already covered that it's more important for us to get right with our brother than to give an offering. Our spirit needs to be right. Too many times the reward of giving is lost because of the bad spirit of the giver. We've got to have a right spirit. The church has to have financial resources to, to exist. It takes money for the church to keep on keeping on. Right? Yes. You've been called to this church. And you've been called to be a part of this body. Amen. And so God expects you to be faithful with your giving. Amen. God's chosen the people of this church to provide for the funding of the church. So we need to be faithful in what the Bible calls tithes and offerings. All of you who were clapping and shouting a while ago need to be doing that now. Hallelujah. Amen. The tithe is the tenth or the ten percent. Its purpose is to provide for the livelihood of the ministry. This is the first ten percent of our increase. Your increase. Anytime you have an increase, ten percent of it belongs to God. Amen. God has a better plan than the government does. Right. God only wants ten percent. The government wants approximately thirty-three percent of your earnings. God trusts you. The government does not trust you. Right. How do I know that? Because the government takes their money before you get your paycheck. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It sure does. God says here, now you give. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Let's all shout Amen. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Everything, I want you to know, everything we've got belongs to God. It sure does. Yes, it That's does. Right. So we're not offering this por this portion. We're not offering this to God. This is, It already belongs to Him. We're just yes, returning it to Him. Yes. Of all of it, it's His. Yes. He just yes. lets us be stewards over 90%. That's we see in the Scripture that there's a blessing for obedience in this area and a curse for disobedience. Read Numbers 18 and 24. It says, But the tithes of the, tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as an Eve offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. Uh, Leviticus 27 and 30 says, All the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Deuteronomy 14 and 22 says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed uh, that the field bringeth forth year by year. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10 says, uh, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed ye? In tithes and offering. Ye, have cur ye are cursed uh, with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all your tithes to the storehouse, uh, that there may be meat in mine house. Uh, and prove me that now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, uh, if I will not open you uh, the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. So we've got to be faithful in our yes. tithes. Uh, yes. And somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then we need to be faithful in our offerings. Beyond the tithe, which is required of God, there's also a free will offering. The purpose of the offering is to support the local church in operation and maintenance. There's no set amount for offerings. It's limited only by your resources and your appreciation and your love for God. It's a good idea to set aside a, a portion of your budget for your offering. Yes. Because it helps us to be faithful. Tithe is a sign that you believe in God. Yes. Amen. Offerings Amen. are a sign that you believe that this is His church. Amen. Praise God. God is looking for faithful people. Yes. Amen. 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 We've got to be faithful in every area. 
in our yes, walk with God. Yes, There's right. no way that we could ever repay God for all that He's done. That's and right. He does not expect us to repay Him. What He does expect for us to do is to become good stewards or managers of the resources that He's blessed us with. Yes, God expects right. us to be faithful to Him since He's faithful to us. And we need to be faithful to God. Yes. We need to be faithful in church attendance. Yes. We need to be faithful to the church family. Yes. We need to be faithful in talent. Yes. And we need to be faithful in time. Yes. And we need to be faithful in giving. Yes. Amen. And I know that this is a growth process. Amen. Yes, it is. So if you're if you're walking in your walk with God, you are growing. So the more you grow, the more you need to be faithful to God. If you're a brand new baby in Christ, uh, uh, you, you shouldn't be outdoing someone who's been around here for a long, long time. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. But if you, if, when we have babies and they don't start after a while, when my children were born, you know, they went to the doctor uh, like, was it once a month when they're, uh, when they're first born? And so uh, once a month, the doctor wants to make sure that they are progressing along and they're doing the things that that child should be doing. Uh, uh, and if they're not, all of a sudden, oh, the doctor's getting a little bit worried. We need to investigate this. Uh, if you have a four or a five year old baby uh, or a child who's not walking yet, who's not talking yet, there's something that's wrong. Right. If you have a, a four-year-old Christian, a ten-year-old Christian uh, that is not faithful in his walk with God, there is something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to worship the Lord with everything that we've got. Uh, amen. I wanted to take the time today and talk about our faithfulness. I felt it was very, very important that we have our children, uh, our young people in here, because they need to know this. Yes. We teach yes. the Word of God. Folks, uh, as pastor and leader of this church, uh, I don't preach my own thing. All I do is God's Word. If you've got a problem with God's Word, then so be it. You probably don't need to be around here. Amen. I've never asked anybody to leave, but if you've got a problem with this book, then you probably don't want to be around here because we preach this book. We live by this book. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ask you to stand to your feet, to greet one another. We're going to begin worshiping in just a few minutes, and we encourage you to be faithful in your worship.